Hi guys and welcome back to the 4am club, a bi-weekly episode where I share with you my journey in trying to get up early in the morning, which I've not been doing, and just my general journey through life. So come along and join me for the last couple of weeks as I share what I've been up to. of the last couple of weeks. As you can see I haven't been getting up at a half past four. Um, I have actually been prioritising sleep, the main reason for that being brutal destroyed me, um, <laughs> to put it simply. I've been a lot more tired since I came back from brutal so I have been prioritising the rest and recovery which is a topic that we touched on very briefly in the last episode I posted a couple of weeks ago. This week's topic is going to be sharing my top tips if you are in a duathlon relay team, especially if you are part of a longer duathlon like we took on when we went over to Wales. Tip number one, and quite possibly the most important if you are part of a relay team, is get to know each other's timings. So by this I mean get to know how long it takes cyclist to do 10 miles get to know how long it's going to take your runner to do a 5k and then you can use this as a basis for a bit of an ETA for when they're due to come into the transition so you can be ready to go when they turn up alternatively you can use options such as beaker on Strava which can be really good at letting you know where they are however if you are in a place where GPS signal is really low then you can risk them not having their little dot moving and then all of a sudden their dot appears upon you and you've got very little time to get ready. So it's always a good idea to have a rough idea of how long it's going to take them and make sure that you have made each other aware of what time you are anticipating on getting in to transition so you can be ready to go when they get back. Tip number two, transition, especially if you are doing duathlons, which normally fall in the seasons of autumn and winter, can end up being cold. And if you are the lucky team runner, then you will have already been out for a run. So make sure you have enough clothes that are easy and quick to get on and off so that you can stay nice and warm during transition, but you can also get them off quick enough ready for getting back out for your second run or back out for your cycle. The cyclists don't often have to do more than one leg, but if they do, then it is, again, important to make sure that you have clothes that you can layer up for, so that after you've come in off your first bike ride, you can stay warm before you get ready to go out for your second. Tip number three. Another one which coincides very nicely for keeping warm, and is especially good for the runners who have to do more than one leg, is to keep moving. There's nothing worse than sitting down and then realising that you need to go and run another 5k. And if you're doing a longer race, you definitely don't want to be sat down for too long. So make sure to keep yourself moving, get yourself doing some form of mobility movements, anything to keep the blood flowing, and then you know that you're going to be ready come your next leg. And finally, plan your food. This is going to vary depending on what length race you're going to be doing and how you would feel for your run. So from the perspective of a runner, you're going to have to think about what food you're going to be able to eat in that transition time between the two runs. You're going to have to think about what you're going to eat to recover from the first one, but also what you're going to eat to prepare for the second one. And you've also got to accommodate for the time that your cyclist is out. The longer they're out, the longer you have to digest food. So you might be able to throw in some different food options. The shorter the time they're out, the less time you're going to have to digest, so you might want to go for something a little bit more simple, sugars based. If you are taking on a longer race like we did when we took on Seriously Brutal, again your food planning is going to change. Um, I was anticipating being waiting in transition for about 7 hours, so I'd planned to actually have proper meals. It, 
get, I knew that I was going to have enough time to digest them. Um, they were really easy to kind of make and prepare. And I knew that they were both going to help me recover from the first run, but also give me enough carbs and energy and everything else I needed for the second one. Whilst you're thinking about food, either from the perspective of waiting in transition in between runs or waiting in transition whilst you're waiting for your runner to come back, make sure you practice with it. There is nothing worse than waiting in transition, eating some food that you've never tried before, and then you go out on the leg of your duathlon and it doesn't sit right. So whatever you decide to go for, make sure you test it and trial it. And if you are doing something where you are going to be waiting around a lot longer for either your runner to come in or your cyclist to come back, then why not throw in the options of some proper foods as opposed to just sports nutrition. So those are my four top tips for if you are doing relays and mostly aimed towards duathlon, but it can also factor into triathlon as well. And it's all just about being prepared. So let me know in the comments down below what are your top tips for whilst you are in transition as a relay team and what are your top tips for if you are in transition as a solo racer. So the next segment is usually the bit where I would give a bit of a shout out to somebody who's joined in the 4am club. But as I've not really joined in the 4am club myself, it's been a little bit hard to actually post about it and share it. So instead I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how you can get involved if you would like to. It's really easy, you just follow these three simple steps. You pick one day in the week and you get up earlier than you normally would. Could be half past four, could be five, could be six. That depends entirely on you and your routine. You spend a bit of time in the morning smashing out whatever you're working on. Workout, cleaning, writing a book, filming a movie. The world is your oyster. And then you go about your normal day. And then in the evenings, take two minutes to reflect on how much more of your day you have gained back and how you felt through that day just by getting up that little bit earlier. Do let me know as well in the comments if you do have a go at doing this and let me know how you got on. And if you do, then take a picture or a video or pop a post up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter or even on LinkedIn where you can find us and make sure to tag Bikes and Laces and then we will give it a reshare, we will drop a comment ourselves and we will give you a shout out in the next episode of the Bikes and Laces 4am Club. So that's a short roundup and that is our topic of the... It's not really a week topic of the show. Still haven't found a uh, good title for that one. I'm going to wrap it up there, but on the next episode, I'm going to be sharing with you what I have been doing to get back into the swing of the 4am club and why I've got back into the swing of the 4am club when I get there. For now though, thank you so much for watching, make sure to drop a comment down below and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps us out. Enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to run, ride, live and we will see you next time. Bye for now!